I'm Stuart Cameron. Welcome to Friday's Look at Rugby. Now, last weekend, we saw both Gala and Hoyt get try bonuses in their final away matches in the Premiership this season, both trying to get a place in the playoffs. But despite also gaining losing bonuses each, it wasn't enough for Hoyt, while Gala have to wait it out now to see if Curry can beat Glasgow Hawks on March the 28th. And if they do, they'll land that important fourth spot to put them into the playoffs and leave Gala in fifth position. But there was some good news last week. Berwick are all but mathematically there as champions of East League One after their good win against Hoyk Harlequins, while St Boswells were confirmed as champions of East League Two following their demolition of Leith. In the RBS Six Nations, Scotland were beaten at Twickenham by England and they've got one more chance to win a game tomorrow when they take on championship chasing Ireland at BT Murrayfield and try and avoid the wooden spoon. And it's with Scotland that we begin. I was at the press conferences during the week where Tommy Seymour, Ross Ford and Captain Greg Laidlaw were reflecting on another defeat and looking forward to the Irish game tomorrow. But let's start with Greg Laidlaw. We were not losing by a lot. And as players, we're hugely frustrated. And it's kind of, you know, I've been sitting here most weeks and, and almost saying the same things. And, and that's the most frustrating thing for me is... Because we are playing so much good stuff, we feel as though we're nearly, nearly there and we're still coming up just a little bit short. So having looked back at the, the video specifically from the weekend, I think the players realise that we just need to really, really hone in on the things we're doing well and really just keep doing that. If you're doing something well and they're not defending it, just keep doing it. Uh, instead of maybe maybe moved away from it a little bit at the weekend and that cost us. I mean, I'm extremely honest this morning, and, and Vern's an honest bloke as well. He, you know, he, he doesn't miss you know when he swings. So um, he, he's been honest, and he, he's been good though. You know, he's he's a clever coach, and uh, and and the boys appreciate that. And, and the boys, the boys, uh, they don't mind being told. You know, if the if they can see themselves almost, you know, some of the flaws in the game, and and then again that comes back to the players when it makes us frustrated again because. It's just it really was just the simple things we done so well in the first half, and we got on the front foot and, and got into the lead, and then we just you know let them off the, the hook a little bit in the second half, and we almost thought you know you know brilliant we're in the lead here we're in with a chance and maybe just maybe just relaxed a couple of percent, um, and then we let them come back to us, and, and even at twenty thirteen you know I felt as though we were, we were still in the game. It's a quick learning process where you, you look at our back line, you know, outside me we've got really young players in terms of Finn, you know, Matt Scott, uh, Mark Bennett and Dougie Fife and Hoggy's a young boy, you know, so they're always learning all the time and, and they're such a big part of the test matches like that in, in terms of like trying to get the kicking balance right and the running game and, you know, a lot of the time it always falls on the nines and tens, but it's it's the twelves, thirteens wingers that have got to see these kicks and and feed them in to, to us as decision makers. So I think they boys got a lot out of the game at the weekend, and, and especially looking back at it, that they're starting to learn that a lot's got to fall on their shoulders for us to produce this. Uh, a lot of the running rugby we're playing, a lot of it's on their shoulders because they're out in open space and, and they can see what's going on. Greg, you'll be obviously pleased with the, the penalty count being below the 10 mark this time and obviously the line-out functioning, Stuart Hogg in defence, working very, very well. Were you surprised at the, the stat of 26 missed tackles? Oh, that's very, very high for a Scottish team this year. Yeah, it was. I think it was... You could certainly see the Scotland boys were getting stuck in. It was nothing to do with putting their bodies on the line. It was probably a couple of um, system errors. You know, it's, it's Matty Taylor. He, was, he wasn't amused about it at all, and rightly so, because it cost us badly a couple of times. You know, we're talking about line speed and getting up, and outside guys getting in front, and then that create dogs like dog legs in the defence, or what we'll call dog legs, and that's easy for them to attack in. And, and that's what happened a couple of times. And once that happens, the knock-on effect is extremely hard because then you have to go backwards, and then to go back to come forwards, it's extremely difficult. So. Probably more system errors, uh, which boys shouldn't have been making, but you know, in the heat of the battle, uh, sometimes that happened. And fortunately, on, on the back of that, as you mentioned, some of the scramble defence was, was outstanding. It just shows that the effort that was put in, a couple of Hoggies tackles were great, and um, you know, to, to mention him in, a, in the general scramble was, was magnificent. 
What about the pressure in the dressing room at the moment? Obviously, this is the final game. No wins at the moment. The last victory at home here at Murrayfield was two years ago against Ireland. Um, it's a record which goes back to the 1950s, early 50s. We've never had a, a worse record than that. And we've got Ireland uh, again this week. I mean, the, the pressure must be building. How do you cope with that? Oh, there's always pressure in the change room and there's always pressure when you pull in the Scotland jersey and rightly so. You, you take confidence from uh, from games like Argentina, uh, when, when we played them here, um, and New Zealand game as well, we played well, and then the games like Tonga, or was it in Murrayfield, um, we won the game convincingly. And, and we've got to look at, I think the players are now starting to understand why we're playing well and then why we're falling short, and that's the key for me, and it's, I'll be honing in on that this weekend to make sure um, all the good bits, we do that and we make sure we do it for 80 minutes and uh, if we do that, you know, I believe we can win the game. And do you think Scotland's on course still for the for the World Cup? Things do seem to be going right in, in, in certain areas and uh, there's still confidence in this squad? Still confidence in the squad and I think it, the whole country's frustrated and uh, no more so than us but I really believe that everybody can see how much better we're playing and, and as players we feel as though we're playing much better and, and I know speaking to uh, the Welsh players after the game and some of the English players I know uh, they really believe we, we've improved uh, you know, a heck of a lot yeah, and to hear that from our side is, is very good and um, you know the results haven't went but we've got one massive game this weekend that us as a Scotland team and, and coaches we're, we're desperate to win it um, win it for, for the, the the jersey, win it for ourselves and to win it for the supporters who, who've been magnificent. It's about us driving standards from, from inside and I think we're starting to, to see that coming through in in some of the meetings we've had and, and the performances to a certain extent have, have been magnificent um, and we just we need the confidence just to keep playing and realise, just to keep doing the simple things really well. You know, we've got a chance as we can to, to not finish bottom and uh, we've got to do everything in our powers to make sure that that doesn't happen. And if we get a win here, that gives us a, a little bit of momentum. Obviously not the momentum we wanted, but it gives us some momentum going forward into the World Cup camp and then we've got four games to build on before we head into the World Cup. Greg Laidlaw. Well, on to another boardroom now in Ross Ford. He'll be winning his 85th cap tomorrow. Find uh, vulnerability in every team we've played and we've been able to exploit it, so it will be no different this weekend. We'll, we'll see where they're weaker and uh, where, where we can make breaks and, and finish them off, so that's what we have to do again this week. But as I said, we have to keep uh, going at them the time and again and, and keep going after the game and keep, uh, keep that forward momentum going. Set piece was all right against England, but obviously Ireland, their uh, defensively, they're very good in the line out, and their scrum's quite good as well. But uh, it's something that we have to look to to get a foothold in the game and establish dominance in that area for, to give ourselves a, a, a good shot at it. So this week we've got to focus on again keeping our line out functioning well and uh, and getting good solid platform from the scrum to attack off, and so vice versa. Try to destabilise uh, what they're trying to do at set piece because a lot of what they do it's sort of all launched off of sort of set plays and that so very structured team so we have to be able to nullify that Ross Ford well let's have a look at the Scotland starting 15 for tomorrow Stuart Hogg winning his 32nd cap would you believe at full back on the wings it's Dougie Fife and Tommy Seymour Mark Bennett and Matt Scott the centre partnership and at number 10 Finn Russell with Greg Laidlaw captaining out of scrum half the front row a slight change Ali Dickinson is on the bench so Ryan Grant will start at 1 Ross Ford at 2 Ewan Murray at 3 Jim Hamilton and Johnny Gray in the boiler house and at 6 Adam Ash coming in for Rob Harley. Seven is Blair Cowan and eight, David Denton. On the bench, Fraser Brown, Ali Dickinson, Jeff Cross, Tim Swinson and Rob Harley with Sam Hidalgo-Klein, Greg Tonks and Tim Visser, the replacements from the back line. Ireland, a very strong team. Rob Kearney at full back. Tommy Bowe and Luke Fitzgerald, the wingers. Jared Payne and Robbie Henshaw, the centre partnership. And Connor Murray is at nine. Johnny Sexton, of course, the kicker at fly half and uh, we'll obviously want to see as little of him as possible tomorrow so let's hope we can keep that penalty count to well under 
double figures. It's Healy, Best and Ross in the front row, Devon Toner and Paul McConnell at four and five. O'Connell, of course, captaining. Six is Peter O'Mahony, seven Sean O'Brien and Jamie Heaslip at number eight. On the bench for Ireland, Sean Cronin, Jack McGrath, Martin Moore, Ian Henderson, Geordie Murphy, Owen Redden, Ian Madigan and Felix Jones. Well, the other player put up for quizzing was Tommy Seymour, who's had plenty to say about the performances of Scotland so far this season. Coming off the back of a, another loss, taking them again, we've got to make sure that we we stay focused and we um, we look at all the things we need to do to, to start winning games. It's our duty as a squad to take the positives and to be focused and to you know keep ourselves up, which is what we're trying to do. I have no doubt that we can... Um, we can swallow that pill that we've had to swallow and you know rightly so we've taken it on the chin and it's you know it's deserved because we uh we have to put performances in which which get us wins but that being said uh all focus ireland and we roll on to the next one and we uh we go out and we um make sure we win a game you know these are international test matches teams you know the level is incredibly high the teams involved in this tournament are very good um, and can play some excellent rugby and uh, will put you under the cosh just purely by playing good rugby and will cause problems just by being clinical themselves. However, we have built platforms in games um, which should be a catalyst for us to go on and, and create more havoc um, and we maybe haven't been able to do that or haven't done that. So we're kind of um, you know, we're kind of causing ourselves problems as well and allowing, you know, allowing opportunities for the opposition to play good rugby. Um, would be a good way of, of putting it. We are not doing enough of the things we are good at on a consistent basis to to um, shut teams out, and we need to do that. Um, so we can give we can give credit to, to good rugby when it's played against us, but I think we have to take responsibility and say that we haven't done enough on a consistent eighty minute level um, to kind of uh, win games. When you know there is, let's be honest, there has been opportunities in this tournament. Which, if we won those games, we should have won those games in some occasions. And in other games, if we'd come off the back having won, um, no one would have denied us, you know, the right to have won them. Tommy Seymour and Stu McFarlane and I will be at BT Murrayfield with Graham McGregor reporting on the big game tomorrow. It kicks off at two thirty. You can hear coverage of that right here on Radio Border's Saturday Scoreboard Live with Keith Clarkson presenting. That's from two o'clock tomorrow. Well, before I go tonight, if you don't already know, the Booker Border League game between Hoyk and Peebles was called off this morning because Peebles don't have a front row. But there is live rugby tonight, and it's at Netherdale, where Scotland under-20 take on Ireland under-20, the Scottish team looking for a third home win in a row in the Six Nations under-20 competition. In East League One, Duns host Langham under the lights tonight. Tomorrow, vital games in National One for Jed Forrest and Kelso, both on the road as they face Dundee and Bigger, respectively. While in National League Three, Hoyt YM visit Perthshire. And that's your rugby for tonight. 